Hello everyone and welcome back to more Let's Play Subnautica. In the last video, we crafted the Sea Moth, our first uh, submersible vehicle. And in between videos, I went ahead and gathered all the materials I need to make the Ultra Glide Fins, a recipe we picked up in the last part. Um, I also took my fins off of my equipment and put them into my inventory, similar to how we upgraded our high-capacity O2 tank in the last video as well. Or, sorry, that was actually in the first video we did that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. Equipment. Here we go. Oh, no, that's not right. Is it tools? Hmm, where are these Ultra Glide fins? Did we not pick up the recipe for them? I could have sworn that we did. I don't see them in this menu, though. Hang on a second. Let me let me take a look here. What's going on? Uh, oh, you know what? Okay, and here's why that isn't appearing. You see, the Ultra Glide fins are under the modification station, which we actually do not have that yet. So, uh, unfortunately, we are actually unable to craft these as of right now. Uh, that's a, that's a little too bad, but it's not that big of a deal. Go ahead and put these back on our person, and then um, I'll go ahead and put the silicone rubber away. And then also off screen, I went ahead and made a second storage locker as I was running out of uh, more storage space. So I'll go ahead and put the titanium and lithium away in here. Uh, now, you might have noticed that we have yet another radio message waiting for us, so let's go ahead and take a listen to that. Aurora, this is Sunbeam again. We just picked up a massive debris field at your location. I didn't know how bad... how many of you... I, I didn't know. We're now en route to your location. We're gonna bring you home. Sunbeam out. What else can I say? The only time... I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR, and I blew it. It's a bad option, all right, but so are all the others. Hmm, well, okay. Uh, good news, it sounds like help is coming. Uh, bad news, he didn't sound too sure of himself. Hmm. Okay, so in this video, I actually do have something in mind that I want to do. Let's see, is the sun rising or setting? I'm trying to... Yeah, it looks like it's setting. Um, you know, I would like to do this during daytime, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, I actually have a specific area in mind I want to check out. And we've got a decent amount of charge, so let's go ahead and head there. Now, the area I'm looking for is going to be like... Uh, like south-southwest, but a little more southwest than south. So we're going to go ahead and head out. Uh, I might end up cutting some of this trip out, but um, this is an area that we're not directed... No, oh, that was a thermal vent. That actually startled me a bit. Uh, this is an area that we, I believe, will be directed to later in the game, but I'm going to go ahead and go here a little bit earlier uh, than the game probably plans on you going. Um, and there's going to be a pretty good reason for that. Now, we are going to venture a little bit into areas... You see, here's the Grand Reef right here. Uh, we do actually want to venture a little bit into this area, although I want to head more towards the surface. Oh, see this fellow right here? That's a bone shark. You're going to want to stay away from them. Uh, bone sharks are really aggressive and um, not afraid to approach your seamoth and do some pretty hefty damage to it. So I do want to stay more towards the surface here. Oh, yeah, see... That's a bone shark right there. He's coming right after me. And you might have seen those green spots on him. That's because that bone shark is actually irradiated. Um, and he's actually suffering from irradiation due to the uh, degradation of the Aurora's drive unit. Um, let's see. Let me just take a look here. Uh, okay, that's the Aurora. I definitely don't want to go towards that. Um, yeah, you might see some more uh, various sea creatures have... Oh, wait, is that what I'm looking for? Oh, it is. It's been right here the whole time. Uh, you can kind of see it when I'm bobbing out of the water, but there's actually an island over here. Uh, believe it or not, this isn't just entirely 
ocean, there are some islands as well, and there's some weird lighting going on there. Hmm. Well, we'll see what that's all about here shortly. Um... I would recommend sticking a little closer to the surface when you're around this area, uh, just because you don't want to dip too deep into the Grand Reef. As I mentioned uh, when we first ventured over there in the last part, the Grand Reef has a maximum depth of 400 meters. Excuse me. And our sea moth uh, can only go up to 200 meters down. Um, so I would recommend sticking closer to the surface. Um, does it look like... Uh, we might be able to get up there, actually. Let me go ahead and get out. And let's see. Now, if you press spacebar, you can actually jump. And now you see we're actually on land. Uh, I think for the first time in this entire game, we're on dry land. Although I don't know. Yeah, we can get up here. Um, okay, so we're going to leave. Multiple energy signatures on the island's surface. Hmm, interesting. So those glowy things we saw are these trees here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, let me take a look here. Yeah, you see the sea moth is actually one of our beacons, so we won't necessarily lose it, um, right away. And we can actually go ahead and turn off these other signals. We won't need those anymore. Uh, now let me go ahead and change the sea moth to yellow. I like to have it a different color than the life pod, just so, again, yellow will stand out more against the blue of the ocean. Um, just be easier to spot. So yeah, we are actually on land for the first time in this game. As I said, the game will probably direct you here, I believe, a little bit later. Not too much later, but there is a very good reason we're going to want to come here. And we should be seeing that uh, hopefully pretty soon here. Now, maneuvering around on land can be a bit tricky. Um, but general rule of thumb is if you're having trouble getting somewhere, just press spacebar to jump a lot. Like, I'm trying to get up here. Uh, this might be, you know what, I might have picked a bad place to get off of the, uh, or get onto the island here. Well, no, this will work, actually. You do want to be careful, uh, about taking fall damage, though. That is something that can be done here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking I might have got off on the wrong part of it. Well, no, okay. See, if we, who, come on. If we just keep pressing space... And jumping, we should be able to get up here. Come on. Yeah, unfortunately, this game's like on land controls aren't super great, but I mean, fortunately for us, we don't spend a whole lot of the game on land. Oh, come on. Maybe I can get over here. Yeah, unfortunately, there aren't many clear set paths uh, on this island, uh, so you're just gonna have to kind of make your own. Now, what we're looking for is actually right up there. You can kind of see, it looks like there's some sort of structure on top of that hill. Um, let's go ahead and head over there. Yeah, I always found this to be one of the more fascinating... I'm going to want to avoid that. Um, I, I kind of always found this to be one of the more fascinating parts of the game because um, there isn't a whole lot of land um, on this planet in general, let alone uh, in the part of the ocean we're at now. Uh, some of you may or may not know, there actually is a sequel to this game, uh, Subnautica Below Zero, that is still, at the time of reco I'm recording this, in early access. Uh, I do actually have early access, and I've played it a little bit, but I haven't played any of the more recent updates. Um, in that game, there's quite a bit more quote-unquote land you can walk on. Um, as the name implies by Below Zero... Uh, you're actually in more of an arctic region, so it's not land so much as ice shelves. Um, and I believe... yeah, I don't know actually if the controls in that game are different than this one. It does feel a little bit smoother walking around in that game than it does this one. Uh, like I said, just the on-land controls are a little bit janky, but... Um, like I said, we don't spend a whole lot of the time in this game on land. Yeah, so as we get closer, you can see there's definitely some sort of structure here. Um, and we'll be seeing the reason we want to come here shortly. Oh. Uh, ooh. Yeah, you see the game also kind of slows down a bit here. Wait, is that... Am I going the right way? Okay, I am. I forgot there's actually two different structures. We're going to want to check both of these out. Um, yeah, that slowdown you saw was the game itself. And I haven't really talked about this a whole lot, but... Subnautica is a great game, don't get me wrong, but it can be a little unsound at times. 
Um, you might have noticed when I surface from the water sometimes, the game, like... And it's the game, not actually the video, it's the game itself that'll kind of, like, lag out a little bit. Um, and, I mean, you can even see right here, like, during the solar eclipse, above water, like... The texture on the sea doesn't look too great. Um, but in any case, here's the reason that we've actually come here. Now, we're going to want to take our scanner. And, yeah, the main reason I'm coming here is to scan all these building parts. Um, this will be very nice to have. You can find fragments for these parts, I believe, scattered in various parts throughout the ocean. But if you simply scan the parts here, um, you won't have to go to various parts of the oceans to get the parts. Since we're scanning the whole room itself, instead of fragments as we would normally find, uh, we're actually just getting the whole blueprint right away. And I believe we are gonna have to go to that other... Um, oh, we can go ahead and scan these here. Um, I believe in order to get all the different rooms, uh, we are going to have to go to that other part as well. But you can see there's also a supply crate here. Um, that's got some water in it. If you're playing survival mode, that's kind of nice to have, but for my purposes, I don't need it. However, here there is an abandoned PDA next to it. Integrating new PDA data. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to check that out a little bit later. Um, yeah, and I haven't actually checked out any of the uh, PDAs we've picked up um, in game so far. Oh, you can see actually there's some more looks like some more ruins down there Yeah, I haven't checked any of those out uh, in game so far uh, But I'll go ahead and do that probably in a later video um, Oh, we've got another radio message waiting for us, but uh, we'll go ahead and check that out when we get back to the base In the meantime, we'll go ahead and head down here and normally I would cut trips out uh, but, you know, we don't see a whole lot of on-land uh, exploration in this game. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep this all in. Um, let's see. Now, I know I said there weren't a lot of paths uh, on this island. At least not in the part I, I came up to in particular. But there are a few, as you can kind of see up there. Uh, you do want to be careful, though, because as I said, it is possible to take fall damage in this game. Uh, and believe me, the last way you want to die is by falling here. Now, okay, you might have seen some movement down there. Um, there are actually crabs on this island. Yeah, you can see one right there by that grow bed. And they will come up and attack you. That one just kind of fell through the ground, though, it looked like. Huh. Yeah, you do want to be careful because they will attack you. Alright, now this right here is the main reason I came here. The multi-purpose room. Uh, if we're going to be building a habitat, these multi-purpose rooms are extremely important to have. So we're definitely going to want to scan this. And alright, we've got a blueprint for it. Blueprint hmm, looks like we also found some sort of purple tablet. Interesting. Well, we'll keep that in mind for later. Uh, there's also quite a few PDAs around here that we're going to want to pick up as well. Now I, oh, come on. Now, I don't believe there's anything else we really... Uh, we'll go ahead and scan this wall planter here. Acquired. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to get particularly badly in here. Oh, there's another PDA in here. I'm actually glad I checked this out. Integrating new PDA data. Oh, there wasn't even a transition for using that ladder there. Interesting. Um... Okay. Wow, yet another PDA right here. Ooh, this supply crate has a battery in it. I'm always happy to pick up more of those if I can get off of the crate there. Um, now let's go up to this uh, sort of... Oop. Let's go up to this uh, observatory up here. Oh, come on. Yeah, you can see what I mean by the on-land controls being a little bit janky. Ooh, interesting. I never knew this tunnel was right here. We don't want to go in there, though. We definitely want to come more up here. And now you can kind of see kind of relative to where the aurora this is. There we go. Here's the path. Um, so if you wanted to come here before you even got the compass, you could. Um, that looks like, looks like something right here. Nope, just part of the wall. Uh, if you wanted to come here even before you get the compass, you could. Um, but... 
I tend to remember where this place is more on based on cardinal direction. Like I, I remembered it was more south southwest, but I don't always remember where that is relative to the uh, aurora, which is why I kind of waited to check this place out. Okay, now we'll come through here, and I believe this will take us up more. I hope it does anyway. Yeah, it does. Okay, good. Okay. I think there's going to be at least one more PDA up here. Oh, come on. Um, there is. Excellent. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and scan this desk and the swivel chair. Yeah, so you can see the trip here is worth it more if you're in the um, process of building a habitat. Now this small marble melon here is actually pretty good to pick up if you are playing a survival run. Um, I wish I could give you a little bit more information about that, but the, to be honest, I'm not very well versed in survival runs. I played a little bit of survival, but only a few hours before, honestly, I just got frustrated uh, with survival and switched to freedom mode. As I kind of explained in the first part, I generally prefer, um, okay, there's our Seamoth. We'll try to make our way down there without dying in the process. Um, as I explained in the first part, oops, ooh, that was, that could have been potentially really bad. Um, man, I'll try to, like, nudge my way down this mountain. Okay, this actually isn't so bad. I'm gonna want to walk around here, though. Okay, here we are. Um, alright, if I can finish my sentence now. Um, as I explained in the first video, I don't particularly care for survival mode myself. Um... Because a lot of what appeals to me about this game is the sense of exploration. And what really hinders your ability to explore in this game is having to stop and catch fish for food and water. Um, and had I been playing survival mode, I, had, I would have been doing a lot of that. Honestly, if I was in survival mode, I might have gotten... Okay, here's our sea moth. Um, I'll walk around this way. Yeah, had I been playing survival mode, I probably would only be about half as far into the game as I am now. Um, oh, there's a little bit more lag there. Um, you know, freedom mode is also a little bit better for uh, the whole let's playing angle, but that's also, like I said, generally just how I prefer to play the game. Okay, we've made it back to our sea moth. So let's go ahead and go back to our base and check out that radio message. I think I'm just going to go ahead and meet you back there. Okay, we are back at the escape pod. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this radio message. This is Officer Keen in Light Pod 19. The captain is gone. I have assumed command. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. We regrouped one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Rendezvous coordinates corrupted. Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. Oh, well, uh... Signal location uploaded to PDA. How serendipitous. I, I believe that actually would have taken us just straight to the island I, ju I just went to. Oh, man. Had I known that I was that close to getting that recording, I might have just waited, but... Um, looks like we're gonna head back to that area we just came from. Um, looks like the distress beacon is coming from a little bit ways down, though. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yeah, depending... I, I don't know, this trip wasn't too long when I made it back just now, but I might cut some of this out. Um... Let me see. I guess I'm heading a little more southwest, uh, though, than south-southwest this time. So maybe this will be a little bit ways off from where I was originally. And now that I'm thinking of it, this path I'm taking is going to lead to a similar location, but it is a little bit different of a path than I took. I went more south, uh, which is why I kind of encountered the Grand Reef there. Uh, this will take us to a different part of the ocean, though. 
Hey, we're actually not too far, so I don't think I'll cut this trip out. Uh, this will take us to a biome that I believe is called the Sparse Reef, which is actually directly below the island we were just on. Uh, you can tell it's the Sparse Reef by these rock spires here. Now, as the name implies, there aren't really very many life forms in the Sparse Reef, so you don't have a whole lot to look out for. Um, as such, I, it should be safe to turn on our f turn on our flashlight here. Oh. Yeah, the game will kind of warn you when you reach your maximum depth limit there, which is really nice. If you dip below it for too long, your Seamoth will start to take damage, uh, which you definitely don't want. Now, looks like... Okay, looks like the life pot is down in this uh, ravine here. So I'm going to kind of like ease my way just above 200 meters. And I'm going to get out here and... Equip my sea glide. Use this for the rest of the way. Uh, I'm gonna pop in here just to refill my oxygen real quick. Okay, now we should be good. Okay. Oh, all right. Here is the life pod. Uh, looks like this one got torn open too, though. That's that's definitely not any good. In any case, here's the PDA. Integrating new PDA data. And here's the data box. Ooh, that'll give us the ultra high capacity tank, uh, which will allow us to have even more oxygen in our oxygen tank. I'm gonna go back to the sea moth here before I take a look at that recipe. Okay. Now, I don't believe I need... Oh, you know what? Uh, I was just about to say, I don't believe I need the modification modification station, excuse me, but it looks like I do. Yeah, we're definitely going to be wanting to get fragments for this station as soon as possible. Uh, in the meantime, I think I'm just going to go ahead and... Oh. Looks like there's a wreck over here. Interesting. Well, as long as I'm here, let me go ahead and check this out. Yeah, you can see there's another door we need the laser cutter frag, uh, laser cutter rather, uh, for this. So we're we're really gonna be wanting to get that uh, pretty soon here, so we can fully explore these wrecks. Um, while I'm at it though, let me just oh you know what I see more of the wreck down there. Okay, let me. Yeah, as you can see, the flashlight definitely gives off better light than the sea glide does. Um, so I kind of prefer to use this when I'm checking out dark areas like this. Okay, nothing much around here. Ooh, that's a moon pool fragment. That's definitely something we're going to want to get. Uh, these are very, very handy to have. And we only need one more, so... Hmm, maybe we can find another one from this part of the wreck down here. I'm really glad I noticed that when I did. Oh, snap. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and like, shine my light here should be fine. Oh, uh, you can see the sea moth. Even when it's even when you exit it, the light is still on, which is very very handy for exploring deep wrecks like this. Uh, as I said, that moon pool is going to be very handy to have, especially once we build our base. So, in a perfect world, I'm going to find another moon pool fragment here. But alas, the world is far from perfect, so I kind of doubt that I will. Now that I say it out loud. I'm gonna get that blueprint right there. Okay. Go ahead and check out more of this here. You know what? I'm gonna pull. Go ahead and pull out my flashlight as well. Oh, excellent! Another moon pool fragment. Oh, I'm so so glad I checked this out. Yeah, that'll be very handy to have. And, and with that, we're actually pretty much ready to just build our base uh, in the next episode here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, as I said, in the next episode, once I get back after checking this out. Is this another moon pool fragment? No, that's a thermal plant fragment. Biodiversity in this region is unusually low. Cause unknown. Hmm. Ooh, is that... That is a Piranha Suit Torpedo Arm Fragment. Wow, that that just sounds badass alone. Um, 
We won't have a use for this for quite some time, but it's still good to grab this while we can. Um, let's see. Let me go ahead and pull out the flashlight here. I think I'm just about done exploring this. Ooh, there's a lot of moon pool fragments here. Okay, we're gonna want to get back to the sea moth. Uh, yeah, though the first time I played this game, I had a hell of a time trying to find moon pool fragments. I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you how many. I mean, I, I probably spent multiple hours looking for them. So. Oh. Oh, yeah, you see, we lost some, uh, or rather, we took some damage there. Okay, that's a reef back. I was wondering what that was. Uh, we took a little bit of damage to our sea moth there. Um, let me go ahead. This is actually a good chance to show you. You can actually repair that damage with the repair tool. Yeah, so now we get, ba get back in. We're back to 100 health. Uh, as I was saying, though, I had a hell of a time trying to find moon pool fragments the first time I played, so I'm glad I found some there. Um, but now that we've explored that wreck, as well as the southwest island over here, I think this is a pretty good place to leave off. Um, I will meet you once again back at the life pod at the start of the next video. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching as always. This is Hexlex, signing out. Have a good day.